Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 41. May the flight be with you. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my charismatic and entertaining co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. Congratulations, sweetheart. I was able to come up with new adjectives this Yay, week for you. So proud of you. Uh, so this week in Disney Detective, uh, we've got some information on a new Star Wars airliner. Uh, we have some information about Disney giving stuff for free. They kind of changed their mind on it. Right. Then we'll get some input from uh, Carrie Fisher's daughter, Billy Lord, on becoming the keeper of the legacy of Princess Leia. And in our entertainment news, we have some casting information on the new Batman, some box office updates on Joker and a new distinction that it has earned. And then we hear from Tina Turner. Uh, regarding uh, a new Broadway play and uh, some news around that. Um, I think we got a active show. Ready to get into it? Sure, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Go for Disney Detective. So United Airlines actually uh, unveiled a Star Wars themed plane that'll make passengers feel like the Jedi or I guess Sith in your case uh, that they that they are. So in conjunction with the uh, new movie coming out, the airline is adding on uh, an out of the galaxy airplane to its fleet for fans who only dreamed about boarding a Millennium Falcon. So the plane, which will be a Boeing 737-800, will be unveiled in November, and it's complete with a themed interior paint, an exterior painting, where the tail actually will have a lightsaber on it, a safety video that will actually feature um, favorites like Yoda and Chewbacca in it. Passengers will also be welcomed on the plane with the movie's iconic soundtrack playing as you're loading onto the plane and you'll be given a little amenities kit that'll have tissues, earplugs, toothbrush, and products by skincare, com- uh, uh, skincare company uh, Sunday Riley. Um, so the interior of the plane will also have, you know, uh, uh, the embossed emblems uh, from the f- uh, the film's dueling factions, the resistance and the First Order. Um, and basically it's to, you know, help obviously you know, promote the movie. Not that, you know, they really need any yeah, help. To they're it. hard, hard, they're hard up to on, get it. Press on it. But I think it would just be kind of, kind of cool. Um, when we did uh, star Wars celebration a couple of years ago, there was one of the, the companies that actually had uh, an R2 D2 plane. Right, uh, right. And I think a C3PO, a C-3PO as well, plane yeah. too. So it's not the first time that, you know, star Wars and, and an airline has, has, you know, uh, gone together. So this was this was kind of cool. So in the wake of the announcement, the airlines mileage plus members uh, now can actually have the opportunity to bid on Star Wars themes experiences, uh, including the opportunity to attend the premiere of Star Wars: Rise, The Rise of Skywalker in Los Angeles and London, or a travel package for four to visit star wars filming locations in jordan so that was kind of cool another little you know bonus uh united airlines also recently announced that they partnered with a sleep management app called time shifter which helps passengers kick jet lag while flying to new time zones 
Yeah, I don't travel <laughs> enough to. <laughs> well, I don't travel <clears throat> horizontally enough across right. time zones for it to be an, an effect. Like when we travel, we travel north south. Right, we usually typically. travel north south, and even then, we, we don't. We tend to stay in the same time right. zone. And usually, you know, if I'm hopping time zones, it's because I'm heading out to California and it's only three hours. Right, right. So this video that, that you're seeing in the background, this isn't the safety. It's part of the safety video, but it's kind of neat because they highlight different uh, areas around the world, um, you know, where... Now that's where the flights are going to be traveling to? No, or? in this video, it was basically, you know, like there's a Star Wars street in, in, I don't remember what the country was, so they actually show you, and there's uh, mosaics I mean, yeah. of, of stuff. So kind of different, you know, kind of cool. So like, you know, London with the background, and, you know, so right. it's, it's an interesting little video to watch, but it's not the full safety video that they're talking about in the article that's going to have the characters and, okay, and everything okay. in it. So, so uh, kind of cool. Yeah, kind of cool. Um, is this promotional short term or are they going to keep this I'm in sure circulation? it's probably. Because I know the R2-D2 and C-3PO ones <coughs> didn't really stay yeah, in service Yeah, I'm sure they're long. probably only going to be, you know, for, for a little while. It didn't say in the article for how long, um, but they did say it would be um, – the planes would be going uh, throughout the U.S., Canada, Central America, and the Caribbean. Okay. It's kind of a shame that it's the new Star Wars. And not know. the old Star I'm Wars. I'm not going to see Imperial <laughs> symbols right, or Darth right. Vader or anything like that. You know, you kind of have to be force-fed Disney's new version right. of Star Wars. But, you know, but look on eBay because they are, everybody that boards the plane. I can buy the plane, plane on eBay? No, oh. everybody that's on the plane will also get a commemorative pin up until the planes, uh, the planes, the film's release. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I'm, I'm guessing the planes are probably, or at least the specialty planes will only be around. You right. know, for for a couple of months. So it's kind of like the monorails, how they feed the monorails, right? So, right. Exactly. Right, that's cool. Yeah, that's something cool. different. So, what is Disney giving away for free? So, this was something we actually didn't uh, bring this up <clears throat> last week um, when the story kind of kind of broke. Or um, so, if you've ever gone to to Disney, um, one of the things that they started doing it was actually back in 2016 was they had uh, the fuel rods where you could get the little battery. Uh, banks for your phones and when you bought it you were allowed unlimited free refills on it so the idea was you know definitely <clears throat> if it was something where you were a multiple trip kind of person it made sense it, it cost uh, $30 and then you could recharge it you know for free you basically would go and and swap out you know uh, an empty one for a full one and again, the idea was it was going to be, you know, uh, a free charge, uh, free refill, so to speak. Well, it's like popcorn <laughs> used to be a free refill. <laughs> right. Right. So then what started happening was in towards the, the end of October, new signage was going up onto these dispensers saying that as of November 1st, a $3 fee was going to go into place. Me? Right. So people actually got pissed off by it because when they, you know, spent the $30, it had said, you know, there wasn't anything that said after so many years, this is, you know, now we're going to start charging. And there actually was a class action suit that was filed. And because of the class action suit, Disney basically came out and said, Oops, yep, that's right, we we were wrong, and basically decided to, you know, so uh, Disney made the, the statement on November 1st saying a decision had been made not to implement the $3 uh, portable charger swap fee until further notice. Guests can continue to swap their fuel rods, uh, portable chargers using the fuel rods owned and operated kiosks at Walt Disney World with no additional cost at this time. Yeah. So at, at this, this time, time until being the case. The, right until something happens, and you know, well, until Disney realizes the, a way to get around the lawsuit, and then they can start charging. Right, exactly. So as of now, 
Or you There's could no just run to like five below. Five below and and, and spend and thirty dollars. Thirty dollars, get six on, of the things, and you're fine. For right, the and trip. and that was the other thing too that a lot of uh, different people were saying that you know not that many people really use them anymore because most of the newer phones their batteries you know are lasting longer or they have their own you know but this that is they another example didn't of, have to spend thirty dollars you know, on that nasty four letter <laughs> word coming up in Disney and Disney not like nothing right. in Disney <laughs> nothing is free. In Disney is free no so yeah okay well at least they backed this off for a little right, bit for so, now and I'll and I can almost guarantee you that it's probably because of the people that already bought it Right, and I'm sure there's a warranty period, and once that warranty period is right, up, right, it's they're probably not something like it. five years or something. So, you know? and I'm sure that if you buy them now, the warranty stated completely different. Right, right. So, so Disney's probably going to get around that. Yeah, so we'll see. So tell us about the keeping the legacy of Princess Leia. So Time uh, Time Magazine actually. Um, published an essay that was written by Billy Lord, um, uh, Carrie Fisher's daughter. Um, and it was basically talking about what it was growing up with Princess Leia as her mom. Um, and it was a very, very sweet article. So I would suggest, you know, anybody that's, um, you know, a Star Wars fan, you know, um, you know, to just take the time and, and go and read it. Um, you know, she talks about, you know, just the dynamic of it and that, you know, she didn't, she couldn't, she never really understood it as a kid. Um, she never watched the movies until she was about six. And then even then she really never finished watching the movies until she was like nine or 10. Like every time they would turn it on, she would be like, mommy, it's too loud. Turn it off or whatever, you know? And she just, she couldn't understand that the person that was on the screen was the same person that was reading her bedtime stories. Right, right. Um, you know, and then she says that it wasn't until middle school that when boys would come up to her and say, wow, I had a crush on your mom, that she was like, ew, <laughs> like, That's what? Not- that's not the way to start a conversation. Right, exactly. You know, and, and she said, you know, here here's a quote. She says, I grew up with three parents, a mom, a dad, and Princess Leia. I knew Princess Leia was kind of like my stepmom, technically family, but deep down I really didn't like her. She literally and metaphorically lived on a planet that I had never been to. When Leia was around, there wasn't much room for my mom, for Carrie. As a child, I couldn't understand why people loved Leia so much as they did. I didn't want to watch her movie. I didn't want to dress up like her i didn't even want to talk about her i just wanted my mom the one who lived on earth and not tatooine um so then she talks about she never lived on tatooine i <laughs> so understand clearly she hasn't seen the well, movies she didn't see all the movies <laughs> so then you know she goes on to talk about how you know she later on you know she watched the movies and she went to a comic con with her mom and she said it was the first time that she realized how widespread and deep the love was for Leia and for her mom and it she said it was just surreal seeing people of all ages from all over the world that were dressed up like her mom the lady who had sang her to sleep and held her when she you know was scared and just the amount of joy that her mom was able to sure, bring to yeah. people just like that was when the aha moment was, you know, um, for her. She said, you know, seeing people, you know, wait in line for hours or that had tattoos or had named their children after her, you know, it was, she said it was basically just magical, um, you know, and then she talks about how, you know, she really never wanted to be an actor, um, you know, she had gone off to college and when she was done, she kind of thought she was, you know, going to kind of do something different. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, they were starting to, to do, um, the newer trilogies and her mom was like, why don't you, why don't, why don't you go and audition? And she's like, oh, I'm never going to get it. And she got this small, cute little part in it. And what was cute was they talk about how, you know, um, going into hair and makeup the first day. And it was like, you know, you know, like her mom was making more fuss over 
her getting her hair and makeup right than, you know, for herself, you know, this is general, you know, Leia. This isn't, you know, just Princess Leia anymore. And that, you know, they, if you, you know, remember from from the movie, she had the buns. buns, And she said it was kind of like, you know, some families have, you know, names that they pass down. We have a hairstyle, you know. So she felt very honored. You know, again, it's such a sweet, you know, article um you know it it had me tearing up you know and then it even talks about how with the new movie you know after the the second one was done i guess when they had already started talking about the third one the third one was really supposed to be the leia movie right you know and that you know jj abrams actually had her come into the office after her mom had already passed and said listen, this is where we want to go with the story. Are you okay with this? You know, we have enough footage from all of the other movies to kind of put something together. We think we can actually make it a Leia movie. And she's like, you know, so now, yeah, she has three parents, her mom, her dad, and Princess Leia. And now she feels she is the guardian of, nice. you know, Princess Leia. Very nice. So again, very, very a really, respectful. yeah, it, it was a great article and, you know, definitely take the time to, to read it. It was on Time Magazine. Um, I'm sure if you do a search uh, for Billy Lord Time Magazine on becoming the keeper of Princess Leia. Very nice. Very nice. And that's all we had for Disney Detective today. Yeah, that was it. Let's move on to our entertainment news. Okay. So casting news for the new Batman movie. Yeah, so every every couple of days you hear a little bit something when we've been talking about, you know, the new Batman movie for for a while now. So it seems that the cast of Matt Reeves' Batman movie is kind of rounding out as Colin Farrell has re- reportedly been cast to betray the Penguin. Um, Andy Serkis is in negotiations to play Bruce Wayne's loyal butler, Alfred Pennyworth. Um, so Farrell and Circus joined the all-star cast as already included Pattinson as obviously the Dark Knight, Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, and Paul Dano as the Riddler. Now, previously, they had been various sources saying um, that Jonah Hill was actually in talks to be the Penguin or even the Riddler, but those actually, you know, fell through. Um, So the production on the movie is scheduled to begin at the top of 2020 with a theatrical release set for June 25th of 2021. And obviously, which, you know, we'll talk about actually in our next article, obviously DC is kind of riding pretty high on, you know, some of their latest movie uh, movies, I should say. Which well, is a movie. pleasant change. <laughs> a pleasant change for DC, right? So obviously, seeing how well um, you know Joker has been doing, that's kind of giving them hope, you know, for the new Batman movie to right. to come to come about. So, see, I don't know. I can't see Colin Farrell as as playing Penguin. You know, see, and that's the thing is because again, this time frame, it's there. You know, he's not the older. He's not. You know, it's a little bit beyond Gotham, I guess. So right. I, I don't know. I guess I but could like, kind of see. I can't, like he can't play the Joker like Danny DeVito did. No way anyone can. You do mean that. Penguin? Penguin. I'm sorry, right. Penguin. And I can't see him picking up from the Joker or the penguin that we saw in gotham. in gotham yeah like i don't know where he's gonna fit in like right. he's gonna have to make it his own right but i could i could see him because i've seen him do like the gritty you know type you know he's kind of gonna i think he's gonna be that in between like not the likable penguin right from gotham because gotham he was kind of right and, and likable but the other thing too is not, danny devito's Penguin was also more. It was a very cartoonish depiction, right? Yeah. Exactly, like Tim and Burton's. not to take anything away from <clears throat> Colin Farrell. He's a fantastic mm-hmm. actor, and and just on town alone mm-hmm. could pull this off. I'm I'm interested to see the direction he goes with it, right? Right, um, because the the penguins that we've seen, right. He's not the first person that springs to mind when you think of penguin, right? Right, and that's the thing is, and and I'm and I'm guessing maybe because of Gotham's, you know, 
Penguin as not being as cartoonish as the other yeah. ones have been, you know, you're going to see that that other side. Yeah, so know. it'll be interesting. We'll see. Burgess Meredith has always been Penguin. To well, me. I was going to say, come on, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, again, comic book. You know, I, that's who yeah, we, you that. know. I yeah. can see that. So, so our next DC... Right. Related story. So, in box office news, Joker has become the most profitable comic book movie ever. Not the highest grossing yet, because obviously... So, you confused me with that when I Right, because so you totally to were, were like, what? So, it's the most profitable. So, here, I shall explain, explain for all of you. To I me. shall explain. Everybody sit down, take your notes out. Okay. So, in North America, after five weeks in the theaters, Joker has made $304.2 million, just in the North America. Globally, it's nine hundred and fifty-three million dollars. Okay, so the, again, not highest-grossing movie, but um, sorry, <clears throat> the movie only cost sixty-two point five million to produce. So that was their budget. So right now, they have made fifteen point three times their budget. Okay. So that's where it's the highest, the most profitable comic you know, book movie. So it's 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 amazing that it only cost sixty two point five to make, given the people that were in the movie. Well, and that's the thing is, you figure, you know, again, we haven't seen it yet. It's more of a psychological thriller type. You don't have, you know, if you compare it to Endgame. The amount of special effects and and things like that, you know, the the budget completely, you know, throws the budget, you know, out, out of out of whack. So, um, so in terms of a budget versus global gross, here's just some figures. So Jim Carrey's The Mask made three hundred and fifty one million to a budget of twenty three million in nineteen eighty four. Okay. Then the most profitable big comic book movie was Venom, which you actually were kind of surprised yeah, when we were talking about, like, it Venom actually made a lot of money. So Venom had made $854 million to a budget of $90 million. And then um, Batman made uh, 40, uh, $411 million to a budget of $35 million. Deadpool, $783 million to a budget of 58 so it's, you know, so now Joker is kind of, you know, building its way up. And honestly, if it once it hits like the one billion, it'll actually be the cheapest movie that had broken, right. you know, that had been um, the most profitable in that respect. You know, I so, think that's, that's a lesson for Disney to mm -hmm. learn that they don't have to spend... You know, six hundred million dollars. Basically, to it, a movie. you know, it, the, the article talks about how it's a studio's dream. It was mid-level budget, a two D film. You know, that's that's pulling in all this business. It's an R rated psychological drama. You know, with kind of a bonus. Um, you know, right now it's the third cheapest uh, million dollar grocer of all time. You have Bohemian Rhapsody. You know, that isn't too far, you know, beyond that, um, you know, so it, it's kind of That's makes a sense. profit margin I'll, I'd take any day. Right. So now you kind of look at, you know, Batman, you know, maybe. Well, see, and now with all these stars that are showing up in well, Batman. Well, that's the other that, thing, too. That, that's going to skew it because even though cost is gonna creep Joker up. has, you know, some big stars in it, too, they're not as. You know, big. So I'm sure their, right. you know, their their salary is is a little skewed with that too. But it, you know, it'll be interesting to see. And then the other thing too is, you know, they're already talking Oscars, you know, nominations right. for it. You know, especially for for Joaquin Fe Phoenix. You know, people are saying he's, you know, if he's not going to win the best actor, he's definitely going to be, you know, up for it. But again, you know, between now and the end of the year. You know, it you all know, depends and, on and what else comes out. And it's funny because they said the same thing about Heath Ledger when he played. <clears throat> and 
and Joker. He, and he, Maybe that's just such a good <laughs> character that whoever well, played Jack Nicholson, thing. too. You know, anybody who plays it, it's such an effed up, you know, yeah. character and, and stuff. But it's, where... it's, it's also such an iconic. I mean, look at right. the people who played it. Right. Even if you go back to the 1960s, you had Cesar Romero right. play it. Then you mm -hmm. had Jack Nicholson play mm -hmm. it. Then you had Heath Ledger play it. Mm -hmm. Now you've got Joaquin Phoenix. And actually, we were just at the mall, you know, not that, you know, earlier today. And one of the, the T-shirt places actually had a T-shirt that had Joker and it had all of them, yeah. you know, on it with their names. And they're all, you yeah, know, they're all incredible iconic. actors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's definitely. Is it the actor that made the character or the character that made the actors? Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny to think back, you know, if, if you remember, you know, years ago, I don't even remember how many years ago, Joaquin Phoenix, I had actually sweared off of acting. He yeah. was like, I'm done. Um, well, never he went doing a little, it he, again. He's gone a well, little he crazy also, a few he, times. He went, a, he went a little crazy, you know, and sometimes you need to have a little crazy, you know, it kind of makes you wonder. Especially if you're playing the Joker. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's where you kind of wonder, hmm, does it really mess with you? And unfortunately, Heath Ledger, you know, passed away, you know. Unrelated to the part. Unrelated so. to the part. But again, was there, yeah. you know. Maybe you just get into that zone as an actor. Right, and, and you just kind it's of. It's hard to step out of it. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be, it'll be interesting it, to see. It yeah. definitely takes a special kind of person to play the role and Absolutely. make it successful. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So. So tell us about Tina Turner. So Tina Turner had the crowd of Broadway's Lint Fort uh, Fontaine Theater on their feet this past Thursday night in more ways than one. The music icon and Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, who is 79, stopped by the opening night of Tina, the Tina Turner musical, with electrifying and heart-stopping new stage show, which is based on her life, and she actually surprised the audience there um, with an uh, emotional post-show speech. Uh, she was joined on stage by all the members of the musical creative team and its hardworking cast. She said, the musical is my life, but it's like poison that turned into medicine. Um, she said, I can never be as happy as I am now. So cheering on Turner from the audience was a star-studded crowd uh, from Oprah to Gail King to Tiffany Haddish, Spike Lee, um, Martha Stewart, just a ton of, of people were there to, to support her. Uh, so after the show, she posed for pictures with the cast who attended uh, and, and guests who attended uh, the opening night after party. Uh, t uh, Turner has long supported Tina, the Tina Turner musical, um, because it actually had opened in London in April of 2018 and this past March in uh, Germany, actually. Um, so the musical traces her turbulent moments of her life from her 50 years uh, singing career. Basically, it, it starts out with the poverty-stricken town of Nutbush, Tennessee, and basically follows her life as she moves to St. Louis and enters into her abusive relationship with her ex-husband, Ike, and basically before she ultimately finds the strength to set out on her own and claim the global superstardom as the queen of rock and roll. Um, her marriage to her current husband uh, is also featured in the show, uh, um, as well as her relationships with her two sons, um, Ronnie, who is 59, and Raymond Craig, who actually died at the age of 60 uh, by suicide in 2018. Uh, she said, I've been blessed with a wonderful career, and after more than 50 years of performing, I don't need a musical, I don't need another show, but I get so many cards and letters, I still can't believe how people feel about me on stage after the legacy they said that I've left. Um, so again, it goes through, you know, a lot of her music and basically the way that the show ends is Tina coming out on stage, uh, in front of a, a, um, a concert that she did in Rio de Janeiro where she belts out her tune, the best. Um, so sounds, you know, if you're a Tina Turner fan, definitely sounds like, you know, something that, uh, you know, would be something to, to try and get tickets for. And, you know, good that she's still, you know, 
Well, I got to say, out there, for 79, she looks incredible. Yeah, and she looked incredible, you know, at, at 60, yeah. you know, and, and in her 50s, she was still out there, yeah. you know, dancing away and stuff. So, you know, God bless her. She's, That's she's gotta definitely, be a good show, though. oh, I'm sure. Just the music alone yeah. and, and thinking about, you know, what's love got to do with it, the, the movie about her life and, yeah. and everything. So now you get to kind of see. You know, a little bit, you know, beyond that. But, yeah. you know, good for her. Very cool. Very mm -hmm. cool. And that was all we had for entertainment news this that week. That is right? it. So we will be back with our insightful picks of the week. And as always, my dear, I bow to you. I want to say that. Okay. After the show. <laughs> So my insightful pick for the week is the new Adams Family movie uh, that actually came out uh, earlier last month. It's actually been out a month now. Uh, November, uh, sorry, October 11th it came out. Uh, so it's members of the mysterious and spooky Adams Family, Gomez, Morticia, Pugsley, Wednesday, Uncle Fester, and Grandma. Um, and... Obviously, the rest of the family is coming to visit as well. Um, so it, it's a cute take on on the comics and, and the other movies. Uh, basically, the movie starts out with Gomez and Morticia getting married. Um, and you kind of fig find out why they... They move to where they are now. Of course, the, the butt of the joke is the fact that they left Europe and ended up in New Jersey. Um, so all the parents in the audience... I don't get the joke. <laughs> You don't, you yeah, don't, don't, get, I don't get it. Because they talk about, let's go to the worst place that no one will ever find us and nobody ever wants to go to, and it's Jersey. I don't think Jersey. that's funny. I know. Yeah, well, I've lived in Jersey all my life. I don't think it's I, funny. I understand that, but anyway. Um, so it's a cute movie. There's a lot of different little um, Easter eggs for, for parents, you know, that are fans of horror movies or, or uh, any movie, really. Um, you know, there's a scene where Wednesday comes home with a red balloon and, you know, Morticia's like, where did you find that? Usually it's attached to a scary clown, you know? <laughs> so obviously if you know about it, you, you know that that was a reference, you know, to that and, and everything. Um and what was really funny was Cousin It is voiced by Snoop Dogg. And That's when you hear it, you're kind of like... I didn't think Cousin It had a voice. Well, he has a... <laughs> oh, okay. But you can tell that it's Snoop Dogg doing it. So it, it, nice. it's cute. And we went, you know, it was our daughter and I that, that went to go see it uh, the other day. And she laughed. She thought it was hysterical. Um, so that was good, you know, because she's she's 13. So... You know, you kind of wonder, you know, when she's going to not want to see a cartoon or, or right. whatever. So, you know, if you're a fan of, you know, the, the live action movies or the original uh, series, which was my insightful pick a couple of weeks ago, this is a, a cute little movie to, to go and see. So. Very nice. Nice pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is not really much of a pick. In fact, I didn't even write anything down on no, this. No, you usually, didn't. You usually you, have a whole big Yeah, usually I'll have a little, little uh, write-up for it and stuff. So I had started watching with you last year, mm -hmm. The Walking Dead. Yep. And you would watch it, and I would sort of listen in, and, and I'd get bored with what I'm doing and come sit down and watch part of the show. And you'd be like, and what's going I on? Was what's going on? Thoroughly confused <laughs> as to who the hell these people are, what happened, why are there zombies? And I decided that I wanted to go back and watch all the previous seasons. Mm -hmm. So my insightful pick is Walking Dead seasons one through nine, <laughs> which over the course of the last month and a half, right, right, I have binge watched. All of them. Yes, you have. Um, first of all, if you're looking to get them, they are available on Netflix. Yeah. All seasons. Because right. that was the first challenge was to find right, them. Right. To find them without having to pay additional right. knowing we had all right. these different so services. Your standard Netflix subscription will net you all nine seasons of The Walking mm -hmm. Dead. And I've watched them all, so I know where we are now. Um, you're probably better equipped to answer questions about it. Probably because it's so because fresh. Because it's so fresh, where like you would mention something to me and I'd be like, 
I don't remember that was like right. two, three years ago. So, where for you it was like but it's, three it, days ago. It's, <laughs> it's such a cult thing that everyone who watches it has watched it, mm-hmm. basically. Right. I'm like the last person to watch these, it seems. Nah, I don't think you are. Um, so this isn't a review. Right. Okay. So it's, this isn't a review. It's just a pick. And my pick, I wanted to go about by asking some of the very simple questions that seem to come up. Um, like the first one is, why the hell did anyone ever follow Rick Grimes? He <laughs> literally is the single worst decision maker in the history of fictional television. And yet people kept following him and letting him make decisions. Stuff like that. Like, why does the grass never grow? There's no one cutting the grass. The zombies don't graze on it. They're not sheep. Yet you walk through neighborhoods and the grass is cut and trimmed and nice. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like they'll go through the effort of covering roads that are not traveled with leaves, but the sides of the roads are all trimmed and there's no grass growing. I don't get that. Um, what were some of the other ones that I had? Well, the, the toilet paper. Yeah, no one ever, everyone no. goes on scavenge. We need bullets. We need food. We need nobody, medicine. Nobody, nobody ever gets, gets toilet paper. Right. Or feminine. Feminine hygiene products. Hygiene products. And how is it that all the women who live in the zombie apocalypse manage to shave their armpits? Right. Or their legs even. Because the guys all have beards. Right. They don't right, shave. Right. I, I don't get I don't get how you can still maintain your 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 hygiene like that. Right. Um, so it's just you know, it's it's worth watching. I think. And you have to mention what you do now, also. Oh what yeah. We're doing so on our n- way so home. now I drive around, <laughs> and this I look at neighborhoods, and I think, well, we could we could really fortify this for the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Yeah, we could sink a well over there, and we could put walls up here. Oh, and this building here, the the windows are high enough that the, the zombies won't be able to get it. So this is the point. This is what happens when you binge watch <laughs> right. nine seasons. So the first season. And watching season 10 at the same time because yes, you're yes. still watching that. So the first season was six episodes. Right. Then the rest were 16, and I think one was 13 episodes. Right, right. So that's a lot of episodes of zombies. Mm-hmm. And why do zombies have such nice teeth? <laughs> I don't get that. Their entire body's decaying and falling apart, but they always manage to have a perfect set of teeth when they bite people. Right. Better to... I bite into a piece <clears throat> of candy and my teeth break, and I'm still alive. <laughs> I don't know how the, Maybe the zombies it's the get a special diet. Of, I don't know how they get a better dental plan I than know. I do. I don't know. Yeah. Um, although on the subject of the toilet paper, there is a scene in episode nine where Michonne does take toilet paper. Finally, it took them nine seasons to finally have to go get toilet paper because apparently somebody was stocking it somewhere. <laughs> Those were all of the the coupon people that have their stockpile right. saved, and that has to be. The house that they they end up finding is somebody that was a, a coupon hoarder, a, a toilet and, paper hoarder, and has you know the whole basement of and you how know, toothpaste did, and how did Abraham go through so many episodes, never see any hair product whatsoever, but his hair stands three inches <laughs> high and flat the entire time. I don't know. Other people are killing zombies or getting splashed with blood, and his hair is perfect the entire time. Mm-hmm. I don't get that. No. Nope. But anyway, <laughs> Walking Dead seasons one through nine. On Netflix. Uh, season four, I think it was. Was it four? Maybe. After the prison? I don't it, know. I think it was season four after the prison. That was kind of hard to get through because everyone goes their separate way and they all get their own. Right. Because that was when they wind up at um, the train thing. The uh, Terminus. Terminus. Right. Which that season was just agonizingly long. Once you get through that, they pick up and they're not too bad right, after right, that. Right, right, right. So, anyway, seasons one through nine, Walking Dead, streaming now on Netflix. And season 10 currently on AMC. Season 10 on AMC. And I think that was all that we had. Yep, that uh, is it. Did we have anything, any afterthoughts or anything? Nope, nothing today. Um, Comic-Con? Comic-Con. 27th? Uh, greater Allentown? The, the Greater Allen 22nd and 23rd? 22nd, 23rd, The 23rd, weekend before 24th. Thanksgiving. 
Yeah, weekend before Thanksgiving. Somewhere in Allentown. We're Allentown, not even sure. Greater Allentown Comic Con. Just saw it yesterday in an email. Right, and we believe it is the same producers that do the Greater Philadelphia Comic Con uh, that's done in media. Yes. Um, in Oaks. Uh, so it's the same uh Production company. Uh, production company. I think it was only like twelve dollars. Yes, very affordable very to get affordable. in. We haven't been there yet. We're planning on going this time. We'll give you a right. review, but I did want to throw it out there. Right, right. So, anyway, you can reach us. Uh, we'd love to get your feedback. Uh, you can email us at comments at insightsintothings dot com or on Twitter at at insights underscore things. On YouTube, you can catch our videos at youtube dot com slash insights into things. On the web at www dot insights into things dot com. You can get our audio at podcast dot insights into entertainment dot com or on Facebook at facebook dot com backslash insights into things podcast. And that's it. That is it. Another one in the books, and we're out of here. And we're out. Peace out.